Today we're going to learn about angle pairs. This is section 8.1 in your green books. So if the notes aren't sufficient for you, you can look there for an additional resource. Our goal is to solve equations to find angle pairs. Vocabulary. We have a lot of vocabulary in our lesson today. We start with complementary angles. These are two angles whose measures equal 90 degrees. So we see we have the right angle right here. Angle 4 and angle 3, when combined, equal 90 degrees. We have supplementary angles. These are two angles whose measures equal 180 degrees. So we combine angle, the measure of angle 1 right here with angle 2 right here, put it together, we got our 180 degree angle. A way you can remember these and not mix up the two types, complementary angles, when put together, they form a corner. Think about the corner right here. Think of the C's, C's for corner. Supplementary angles, they form a straight angle. Think of the S's, straight, supplementary, which is 180 degrees. So here's a point where if I uncover a problem, you can go ahead and pause this, the video, try it yourself while I solve it for the class. So we know that angle one equals 37 degrees, find the measure of angle two. These angles are supplementary, which means they equal 180 degrees. So 37 degrees plus an unknown amount of degrees equals 180. We know from our equation knowledge, we subtract 37 from both sides. So 180 minus 37 equals 143 degrees. That is the measure of angle two. Down here, we have complementary angles. So if angle three equals 27 degrees, what is the measure of angle four? So again, 27 degrees for angle three plus some unknown amount for angle four gives us 90 degrees. I have a little more room here, so I'm going to go ahead and show that one step of subtraction. Now that goes away. So x would equal 63 degrees. That is the measure of angle 4. Okay, moving on. We have another pair of angles we're looking at. They're called vertical. These are a pair of opposite angles formed when two lines intersect at a point. They always have the same measure. Another word for that we hopefully know is congruent. So we can say vertical angles, oops, what does it say? Vertical, not verticals. Vertical angles are congruent. And if you forgot from last year, that little symbol for congruent looks like an equal sign with a squiggly on top. So right here, we've got four angles. We've got two pairs of verticals. And they're kind of color-coded for you. One and three are vertical. Okay, They are opposite of each other. And they form when these two lines intersect at that point. And then we'll say 2 and 4 are vertical as well. They're opposite of each other. So 1 and 3 are congruent. 2 and 4 are congruent because they are vertical. More vocabulary. Transversal. This is a line that bisects two or more parallel lines. Then we have corresponding angles. These are angles that have the same position and measurement when a line intersects two others. And that line would be the transversal. So, for example, we have this drawing. This big line cutting the two parallel lines, that is our transversal. That's what that term means. We've got our two parallel lines. We know they're parallel because they have this symbol on them. So the corresponding angles we have that have the same position and measurement, 
on this diagram, there's four pairs. Well, we look at angle one. It's kind of in the top left of that top set of angles. Angle five is in the top left of the bottom set of angles. Angle two, the top right of that set. Angle six, the top right of that set. Angle three, the bottom left of that set. Angle seven for that one, which of course leaves angle four and angle eight as corresponding, which again means they are congruent. They have the same measure. So we can use any of the appropriate vocab terms we've learned so far in this lesson and figure out the measure of all seven angles. Go ahead and pause the video and try to figure out the measures while I do it right now. So I'm looking at angle six being vertical from our given 85 degree measure. So angle six will equal 85 degrees. Angle six and angle seven are supplementary. So 180 minus 85 gives us 95 degrees for angle seven. And then seven and three are, of course, I'm sorry, are vertical, which makes angle three 95 degrees. So now we can use our knowledge of corresponding angles from the last slide to figure out all the rest. Just look at angle two is in the same position as our given 85 degree measure. So angle two is 85 degrees. We can keep going with corresponding. We can use verticals. We can use supplementary. Angle five is in the same spot as angle seven. That'll be 95 degrees. Angle four is the same as angle six, 85. Angle one, same as angle three, 95. That's the way that I chose. You can choose any way you want to figure out the correct measures. For a little more vocabulary here. So we've got another diagram with a transversal bisecting two parallel lines. We have alternate interior angles. These are angles that, ha that are on opposite sides of a transversal, and they are inside of the parallel lines. Alternate interior angles are congruent. So in our diagram, we're looking at the interior angles, the ones that are inside the parallel lines. We're dealing with 3, 4, 5, and 6. Well, 3 and 6 are also on opposite sides of the transversal, so they're alternate interiors. Angle four and five are on opposite sides of the transversal. They are alternate interiors as well. These angles are congruent. We then have alternate exterior angles. We're still looking at angles on opposite sides of a transversal. This time they are outside of the parallel lines and they are congruent as well. So our alternate exteriors we're looking at 1, 2, 7, 8 as they are outside the parallel lines. 1 and 8 are on opposite sides of our transversal. They are alternate exteriors, as are 7 and 2. Okay, so in this diagram, we're going to figure out the measures of the given angles. So we've got our previous knowledge we could use, but now with our alternate angle knowledge, we can do it maybe a little bit quicker. The measure of angle two, right up here, it is outside the parallel lines, as is our given measure. It's on the opposite side of a transversal. Therefore, angle two has the same measure. It is congruent as our given measurement. Now angle four, I see that angle two and angle four are supplementary, which means they equal 180 together. If angle two is 125, 180 minus 125 is 55 degrees, using supplementary angle knowledge for this one. Now, angle five, again, multiple ways we can find it, but I'm seeing that angle five is inside the parallel lines, just like angle four is, and they're on opposite sides of our transversal which means they are congruent, excuse me. 
So angle 5 equals 55 degrees. And that is it for this slide. So multiple ways to find angle measures. Use whatever is most comfortable and efficient for you. And last, we've got a little bit of a matching game. So you can go ahead and pause the video and see if you can match up the right measures with the right descriptions. I'm going to pause the video myself. When it comes back on, all the correct measurements will be there in the right spots. And we are back. Hopefully, you got these answers when you tried to match up the measures yourselves. Come to class with any questions you have from this lesson. This concludes your lesson for this evening. Have a good night.